Welcome to the I Know Bado podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the I Know Bado podcast. Come man, at you from the local 218 studios. I immediately start talking and start reaching for this knob. And, and now I didn't even put my fingers on it this time. I was wildly aware that I was about to touch it, and then I just kind of pretended to fiddle with it. So, hey, everybody that's that's listening and or watching, I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm Dave Bedeau. I'm the mayor of the city of Brainerd, and I'm here with my brother. Like like a relatively old penny. Uh, classic. <laughs> always is. Always is classic. Uh, and I'm also here with the, the councilman, Gabe Johnson. How are you? I'm a man. <laughs> I'm 40. <laughs> I'm a man. I'm 40. Uh, one that, of the, is that a football coach? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cincinnati. No, not Cincinnati. Like Oklahoma State. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Oklahoma State. Yeah, I'm a man. I'm 40. Yeah, don't don't go after my kids. Come after me. <laughs> uh, you are 40. I'm 40. I turned 40 recently. Old as hell. Old as dirt. Yep, yep. And I'm slightly older. Much older. Much, yeah, much older. Like like two months older. Uh, let's talk about it. Had the birthday. Had the birthday. Got older. Uh, feel the same. But uh, we, uh, since you were turning 40, I was yep. turning 40. Our good friend Keith Larson was Keith turning Larson. 40. He, our, he's here, right here. Our good friend Matt Farr. Yeah, yeah. It's, Keith, it's Keith's week to be on the show. Yeah, sitting right here. Yeah. So uh, it was... Uh, Matt Fargo's 40th birthday, yep. so we decided, hey, we're all men. Yep. We're all 40. <laughs> Let's go have a couple's dinner at the Local 218. Yeah, which was a lot of fun. Uh, shout out, of course, to Local 218. Uh, packed. Uh, had to get reservations. Thank the Lord that we did, because we wouldn't have got in. And uh, just absolutely packed, delicious as always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, talk about it, though. Uh, so uh, I'm going to throw this out real quick, because... Uh, talk about it. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it. You know what? Go. My knees are kind of sore. <laughs> you say that. You say that. But my snowblower uh, just crapped the bed. We'll shift complete gears. We'll get back to the local two and eight. My snowblower crapped the bed. I put gas in it and fired it up, and all of a sudden it started spurting gas out, and then yeah. just leaking like a sieve. So either there's a, a a seal or a washer or something that has broke, or knowing my luck, it blew out a gasket completely or blew up the engine. Um, but it's freezing Knowing cold. Your luck. It's been a lawnmower this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. T- t- turns out, you know, the, the, I, I wondered why it, you had to like come down on it. <laughs> uh, but it's it's freezing cold, of course. So, and I don't have a heated garage, so I'm not going to get in there and fix it. So now I'm just out a snowblower. I'm gonna have to go buy a new one. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I wasn't going to fix it anyways. Let's be clear about that. I think you like rotate the carburetor like a quarter turn and it you're could, probably fine. I hope to God you're right because that's probably it. But uh, my back <laughs> hurts now. I, I freaking shoveled a bunch of snow because we had the heaviest freaking snowfall of all time. You know, we got a what? We got a good eight inches probably of it just. Might have, been, might have been 12. I think it was about 12. Okay, 12 yeah. inches of just pure wet snow mm-hmm. and uh, did a lot of shoveling. Uh, and now my back hurts because I'm old. So. A big shout out to friend of the podcast, Justin Goble, GNL Excavating, for coming in, plowing out my driveway. But yet my back still hurts. Anyways, back to the local 218. Mm. What'd you have? Best scallops in central Minnesota. Yeah, you'd, in Minnesota. Yeah, you would you would think in Minnesota, a little landlocked, you know. Mm-hmm. And again, with the elephants upstairs. Uh we uh, he flies them in yep. daily from the coast, I think. About, I believe maybe, so. Maybe every other day. Yeah. But yeah, he's got Fresh, fresh food. Fresh, fresh food. And we're just going to talk right through the unbelievable noise that's happening upstairs. The women you just called elephants. Well, <laughs> oh, when, you're st- when you're stomping around, it's, it's call a spade a spade. Uh, Callie had the pork tenderloin sandwich, deep fried breaded mm. pork tenderloin sandwich. Um, she had a, had a response to it like I did. PJ, I had one time in there said, uh, hey, I want to try something new. What do you got? And he said, you got to try the pork tenderloin sandwich. And I said, ah, well, that's not really my jam. Uh, flipping delicious. So Callie did the same thing where everyone else is ready. And she's like, oh, I don't know what I want. And I'm like, we've been here a thousand times. You you know what you want. Uh, and I said, I guarantee you haven't had this. Try it. It's delicious. And she had it in the same experience. The thing is fantastic. Just thinly pounded, breaded, like a chicken fried steak is mm. what she referred to it like. Um, just delicious, fantastic. Just a little bit of mustard, pickle, little onion, 
delish. So all week I've been regretting not going with the lobster tails. Though. Yeah. So I'm, I'll be back sooner than later. I think. <laughs> For your 40th birthday, you're a man and you got to order what you want. Yeah. So one thing happened with that wonderful birthday. Like you said, myself, you, Matt Fargo. Keith Larson. Keith Larson. He's a man. He's a man. I'm a man. I'm 40. It's Keith Larson Day here on the podcast. It's the third week. Lo and behold, the seat is empty. There's no uh, Keath Larson. Poop again. <laughs> oh, oh, for two. <laughs> He's one for three. Uh, well, I think we got him the one week and then decided yes, we would make so, the week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes. since deciding the the third week would be his week. Since he has gi- not made it. Yeah, since giving him a month <clears throat> to prepare and be on time for the podcast, he is O for two in showing up for the podcast. But he is also O for O or O for one on showing up to his own damn birthday. Missed the birthday party. <laughs> Same thing about that. And my favorite thing was Gabe sends me just a, a, a snap grab or a screen grab of a, just a clip of a conversation that says, hey, I, I got to think it's St. Cloud. Don't know if I'm going to make it. Don't know if I'm going to make it. And, and Gabe's message just said, if you had to guess, <laughs> who do you think this is? And lo and behold, Keith Larson. Nailed it. So, hmm. uh, <clears throat> got a thing on his birthday. Got a thing all of a sudden now again. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to call him out. I'm going to throw him right under the bus. I'm over it. Because we kicked Keith Larson off the podcast one time before for the exact same shit. <laughs> I don't care if, if you don't want to come on. I, I don't care about that. But we have a waiting list of people that are trying to get on the podcast. All of January is filling up really quick. I think I think we may have one or two weeks. One of those weeks being Keith's week where we don't have somebody that's trying to get on the podcast. Uh, I, I love you. You're great when you're on, but I would rather just not have you on than deal with this crap where we've just got an empty seat. Because if we had planned a game or something along those lines, we got to reshuffle everything because you decided the day of again to cancel on us because you have a meeting. Which I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm I'm a mayor. I'm forty. I'm a man, and I'm a mayor. <laughs> got a lot of meetings. 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 They they typically get scheduled. And when the meeting... Not at 8 in the morning that day. No, they do not. They're typically scheduled mm-hmm. ahead of time. You typically know when the meeting is. And typically if someone says, hey, can you have this meeting on this time? I look at my calendar, lick my finger, and I flip through my calendar on my phone. Say, oh, shit, I got something going on at that time. Oh, shoot. Tuesday at 2, this one Tuesday of the month <laughs> at 2 o'clock, I have something I have to go do. Um, so <clears throat> I'm over I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being really loud on my microphone. I'm over it. I'm ready to to give him an indefinite suspension. Keith Larson, indefinite suspension. Oh, Keith hardest hit with that. Well, so... <laughs> 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 However... I'll miss you, Keith. Have you been... <laughs> I love the guy to death, but... You're a man. You're 40 <laughs> fucking years old, dude. Show up. I'm a man! I'm 40! However, Twitter... Elon Musk. Have you been paying any attention to this at all? <clears throat> the Musk yeah. abides. It, it's it it's amazing because I, I'm not. I still quite can't quite figure out what he's doing uh, because it's kind of all over the place. But he's been my favorite thing he's been doing is just putting up polls, and then he says, "I will 100 percent follow whatever the results of this poll are." And the last one was, "Should I not be the CEO of Twitter anymore?" And it appears that he has lost that poll. It yeah, was, it was. Like fifty eight forty two, it wasn't all yes. that close. Yeah, the bots so, really don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows if he's going to abide by it? But that's what we're going to do here. We're not going to do it on Twitter because we have zero following on Twitter. I would actually say we have negative following on Twitter. I like some of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just mine. We're, yeah, our, I, like, I like some of your stuff. Yeah, we're, we're, I like some of our stuff. You do tweet as a group of people. Yes, we I, I always use the word we. Yeah. We it, it is in us. Uh however, but you don't run it by Scott and I first. Uh, well, we that's because share our opinion. Yeah, not one time ever. <laughs> that's because your opinion is just age, sex, location. We went through that where you <laughs> ran our Twitter and you just sent Barack Obama the question age, sex, location. Never got back to us. It was engaging content. I, I you should have asked about Michelle. Michael <laughs> <laughs> Michael Obama. You you may not be aware, but uh, there's a group of people on the internet, and somebody that we know is one of them, 
uh, that believe that Michelle Obama is really Michael Obama. Michael Robbins. Michael Robbins, yes. Yeah, so. Michael Robbins. Yes. Robinson. Robinson. Michael Robinson. Yes. Yeah. Evidently. Is, is that just a name they picked? Or is, no, that, or, or is like, that or is that a person if, that they think that she's also this other person? Yes, <laughs> yes. That's okay. what they that person. So yes. what does Michael Robinson do? Has a dances dom. around and dresses <laughs> with his dong. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he's the former first lady. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, That's a penis. We'll be polite. I, I, I I'm not going to call Michelle Obama Michael. Robbins, but uh, we Robinson. do Robinson. Sorry, we but we do we do have a friend in our circle that sends me way too many uh, videos where it's like that's a dong, <laughs> way, way too many times. It's like, hey, listen, you're really invested in this. You're really invested in this. Uh, it's just sending you pictures of penises, potential penises. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Is ask, asking the expert. Hey. Dave, hey, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> like, I gotta know. Is this or is this not a dog? I don't know who else to ask. <laughs> if I get called into court, if I get subpoenaed as a, as a penile yes. uh, expert, dong expert, dong expert, yes. Uh, I don't even know where I was going with this. Now we got so well, far off track. Know, <laughs> Anyways, on Twitter, Elon Musk uh, keeps putting up polls. So here's what we're gonna do with Keith Larson. Uh, we are gonna put up a poll. We're gonna do it on Facebook because we have a little bit better engagement on Facebook. Facebook poll. Uh, should Keith Larson get another chance or do we put him in an indefinite suspension? And now I, I love the term indefinite because it sounds like it's uh, you're never coming back, but it just, it means uh, who knows what the, the suspension will be, but I'm not going to ask you guys. I mean, if you want to chime in, you can chime in. Uh, this might be the first time I ever engage in anything <laughs> podcast related. Thanks. <laughs> uh, but we'll uh, we'll put that up on Facebook. the The poll will be: Is Keith Larson is he worthy of another shot of joining us on the <laughs> is podcast? Keith again? Larson a dong. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what we'll call the poll. Uh, Keith's dong. Uh, or are you, are you familiar with uh, Donald Glover? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. His his Twitter handle. No. Is is Don. Glover. Oh, nice. And I don't think that was intentional. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you might want to ask to have that changed. Hey, is that Don Glover? <laughs> Don Glover? Uh, so go on our uh, Facebook. You'll see the poll for that. I'll actually put the poll up as the post uh, on Facebook for this episode. Uh, should Keith Larson get another opportunity? Five millionth opportunity? Uh, or should he have an indefinite suspension? And uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Again, I love having him on. He's a ton of fun when he's on, but it's the same way I am with him in regular life. I stop making plans with him because he he does what we call the Keith Larson double book. He will make plans with you, and then he just waits to see if anything else comes along. And then if something else better comes along, he just cancels with you. And it happens enough times where I learned I enjoy being around him. I enjoy having fun with him. However, I'm not going to make plans with him. If I run into him, we'll hang out. And that it might be the way that the pocket is. Maybe next it, thing you know, you're going to be in the podcast studio with your mom and a bunch of brown gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Scotty he does the news. <clears throat> That's a hell of an intro, man. I, if you're still with us, <laughs> dear Lord. It was a journey. <laughs> Poop again. Uh, amongst hundreds of thousands of muddy spuds. A World War II-era grenade was picked up on a conveyor belt at an Auckland potato factory. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. The Old Mills bomb grenade, which has since been confirmed as being a training grenade, which didn't contain oh, okay. explosives, okay. is believed to have been dug up during harvesting on a farm in Matamata. Mata. Where's Matamata? Mata? That's a good question. Auckland. Yeah. Auckland. Area. Suburban Auckland. <laughs> Rural. We're probably Is that New up. Zealand? Yes. New Zealand. Okay. Wow. I, didn't, I didn't know they had potatoes in New Zealand. I didn't know they had World War II in, in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That had to have been a friendly fire. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it was just I mean, it's training. Pretty, yeah, it was training. Yeah, it's pretty close to Japan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, so that's the thing. I mean, it was Can... it was the world that was yes. at war. <laughs> and again, they chose <laughs> yeah. their own. Yeah. Do you think you are Mars? <laughs> <laughs> Best joke of all time, yeah. uh, the late, great uh, Norm MacDonald on David Letterman, by the way. Yeah. And Germany, once again, chose as their opponent, <laughs> the world. <laughs> but hadn't been tried before. That Actually, that's the first part of it. Hadn't been tried before. 
All right. Yeah, it's not an uncommon occurrence in the European factories, you know, given the two world wars that we fought around it. But yeah, really unusual. That'd be the coolest thing I ever pulled out of the potato bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine it makes it into the bag yeah. at the grocery store. This one's got eyelets. This one's a grenade. <laughs> We talked about grenades. Grenades are fascinating. I uh, uh, just love the idea of them. Got some yes. Noise. We got more. <laughs> We're just getting disturbed by all uh, that. And uh, we learned recently that uh, shrapnel. Yes. Named after, what was the guy's name? Like Henry? Mr. Shrapnel. Yeah, it was, yeah. Henry Shrapnel. Yeah, like, yeah. That's fascinating. It is actually fascinating. Bizarre. <clears throat> Surprised you didn't know that. All right. For the first time, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has granted approval for a feces-based microbial treatment, which oh. is used to prevent a recurring diarrheal infection that can become life-threatening. Wait, hold on. They're, they're fighting diarrhea with diarrhea? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. It's poop again. The, the, ap- second poop again the approval is years in the making. Researchers have strained to harness the protective qualities of the complex, diverse, yet variable microbial communities found in healthy people's intestines and stool. Early on, rich fecal matter proved useful for restoring balance and blocking infection in those whose microbiomes have been disturbed, a state called dysbiosis which can occur from disease and or use of antibiotic drugs. But our understanding of what makes a microbiome healthy, functional, and protective remains incomplete. (laughs) Doctors, meanwhile, pushed ahead informally, trying an array of methods to transplant fecal microbiota from healthy donors to the guts of patients via enemas, tubes through the nose, and oral poop-packed capsules. Oh, no. As is, of course, the tradition. Welp, see you later. The enema is probably the best option. Yeah. Put it through my uh, fucking nose. <laughs> Started off with, with the, we're going to stick this up your butt. And then got we're a lot. stick the poop up lot. your butt and say, okay, that's where it belongs. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can got, understand that. It got a lot worse. I, you know, the, the swallowing of the pill, you, you eat enough wretch in your day-to-day life, in your Cheerios. What is it, 4% in oats is acceptable? Like, I believe it's like 4%. 4% seems, I, seems high. That seems excessive. I that, think seems it, re- that seems really high. <laughs> Point 0.4, I would not accept. Uh, Gabe, look it up. I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's 4% is acceptable in oats. There's no way. Okay, well, we'll Four, find out. 4% is huge. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you, you get told you eat eight spiders, not true. Eight spiders a year, not true. Eight turds. Pretty true. (laughs) Pretty true. Now a product has finally floated to the top. (laughs) After years. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Rebiota? Rebiota? I don't know. A blend of donor stool, saline, and laxative solution given in a single treatment as an enema. It's teeming with heavily screened intestinal microbes at a concentration of over 10 million live organisms per millimeter. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, the live organisms part freaks me out because one time I ate Activia cheese and <laughs> it was the worst experience of my life. Activia cheese? You remember that? Activia, like they used to have the... I mean, like yogurt. Well, they, they had a cheese. They had like, it was like a little block of like cheddar. It was like a single serving of cheddar and I ate that and then immediately was like, this is unacceptable. <clears throat> my microbiome is out of whack. <laughs> well, the, you know, it, was, it was a lot of diarrhea after that. Interesting. Sci- scientists have known for years that fecal transplants in general are highly effective against this C. diff yes. infections, which can be extremely difficult to cure. Um, oh, really? So this is like severe, long-lasting? Like this is a, like if you multiple days or the how severe are we talking about here? Dysentery? <clears throat> is this is this along those lines? Um, hold on, I lost what it's actually called. Gabe, how much is the percentage? I can't find a percentage, but it says for every quarter cup of cornmeal, the FDA allows an average of one whole insect, two or more Mm -hmm. rodent tears, and 50 or more insect fragments, or one or more fragments of rodent dung. One or more in a... Fragments. Fragments. (laughs) Okay, all right. right. What's the... 
That's CNN that's the size. Medium that's, size that's, on... That seems way less than 4%. I'll take it back. A quarter cup? How big's the fragment? I, yeah. I, I'm... I stand by I stand by my assessment. At some point, I believe I was told that it was four percent, but I may be wrong about that. Uh, Clostridio, it is a deficit. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> we'll just call it C diff. Doctor. C diff bacteria cause diarrhea and significant inflammation in the colon. Severe infections can be life threatening. In people with dysbiosis, C. diff can proliferate in the intestines, producing toxins that can lead to organ failure. Oh. Older people, those who are hospitalized and people with weakened immune systems, are particularly susceptible. They always... Yeah, they're susceptible to everything. Yeah, right. It's called being old. Yeah. <laughs> scientists are scientists are trying to, to solve, why do old people get sick? Yeah, old people shouldn't be getting sick. <laughs> Immunocompromised people getting sick? <laughs> we must stop. Yeah, you can get a uh, if you got if you got the C diff, you can take a poop pill. Well, it seems it seems almost like an old school inoculation, right? Like yeah, you don't want to get measles. Give yourself a little bit of measles, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, go, right. Go play in the sh- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the enema part sounds the worst. Really? I, I the think e- up the, the enema nose. Part? The nose. The, the nose. Sh- up the nose. Yeah, the, is up, the worst. Okay, I'll take. I'll take it back. The up the nose is, is you know worse. What the worst part is <laughs> the hypocrisy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not being a hypocrite, and that's the worst part. Uh, sure. Yeah. The nose is the worst one. I don't know. I I was water skiing one time and uh, went off a sweet jump, and my rear end hit the water, and uh, <laughs> never <laughs> ever since. <laughs> Anti-enema. Yeah, no enemas. I'm very anti-enema. Let's enemas just say the that. worst way to, to <laughs> yeah. consume. I don't think that was a <laughs> medical... <Yeah. laughs> From here on out, enemas, the worst way to consume poop. <laughs> that is the worst way to consume anything. I'm going to have a bad time. Speaking of gross. <laughs> That's <pretty> great. <laughs> uh, rancher gives new life to afterbirth by creating oh. art from cow placentas. Oh, good lord. Well, see you later. Emily Matson was inspired to use the unusual medium, which looks like stained glass during calving no, season. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it <laughs> looks like blood, <laughs> guts. <laughs> looks like placenta. When customers enter the Dawson Creek Cannabis Company store to buy marijuana, some are stopped dead in their tracks by what looks like a full-sized glowing coffin in the middle of the store. Illuminated from within, it looks like a stained glass casket. So, oh, so she stretched it? it? But it's actually a work of art crafted from cow placentas. Oh, good lord. Good lord. Yes, there is a picture. Looks like stained glass. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another elephant. Matson said she was first inspired to use the unusual artistic medium during calving season at her ranch more than 20 years ago. Oh, calving. I Calve. thought you were saying camping season. No, calving. <laughs> like, like, mm, calves. Hey, do you campers pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Helping to deliver a calf in her barn in bitterly cold weather, she slung the placenta over a light at the edge of the stall. We're helping, uh, quote, we're helping this cow because she's having trouble. And I look over and with the light behind it, the placenta looks like stained glass, she recalled. So beautiful. So beautiful. She soon began to experiment with adding preserved placenta to her repertoire. Preserved in a special brine, she says placenta dries like parchment or leather. Preserving dramatic colors. You are all weirdos. All right, are we done with that one? Uh, I mean, we can be. Yeah. Next. What would yeah. What would you What would you use uh, to make a stained glass coffin? Yeah. Or what would you use uh, placenta for? Uh, well, there are a lot of people that dry placenta and then eat it like in pills. Well, not a lot. Four percent. Four percent. Four percent. We, we, well, we we found this is that about four percent of people are just weird. That's Emily's it, one of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what I would use cow placenta. You know what I would use cow placenta for? I would use it as a a, a starter in my garbage. It would just be like this mm. goes in here, and then we pile other things on top of it. <laughs> I would so, the bottom. So, I would leave it on the dirt. Uh, that's just garbage. That's exactly what I'm saying. I would, I would, I would just... use it to be in the garbage. Yeah, I would... <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't pick it up in the first place. 
<clears throat> you're just letting it hang out. You can't let cow placenta well, just hang out. It's not in the field, I would. Would yeah. you Would you eat it? I, do. I suppose animals will Probably come. Probably there's a lot of iron. <clears throat> I suppose yeah, like, it's like full of uh, nutrients. No, that, uh, what, what's that guy's name who just got busted for using steroids? Oh, oh, yeah, the, the liver, liver king, king. The liver king. king. Oh, my God. The placenta. Oh, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. It's a picture of the liver king. It's like, we're surprised this dude's yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whoa. He was, however, though, he was, so he was making millions of years or millions mm-hmm. of dollars, millions of years. Every dollar. <laughs> Every dollar, millions of years. He was making millions of dollars a year uh, spending $100,000 a year on steroids. Uh, I think I'm going to become the placenta king. I'm just going to tell everybody I've been eating placenta. I'll go on a bunch of places, have other people eat placenta. Because that was the best part. Was like He would go on podcasts and on people's YouTubes and mm. stuff and like have them eat raw liver with him. Yeah. Raw oh, liver? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cooked liver is good, but yeah, I've never no, had he raw was liver. Straight into <clears throat> raw liver. And then, and then. Isn't he like making his kids do it too? Like his whole oh, family. I, I think his whole family is like on this. For was 10 also, million dollars a year? Yes. Yeah. So he was, it, it was a good return on investment. I would, I, I'd maybe do that. Yeah. Uh, Turns out, no, it's just, it's just steroids. Turns out steroids work. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The liver king. Yeah, and that, the worst part, is the hypocrisy. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> I think the raw liver is... He, he reminds me of the... Of <laughs> the bad too. He reminds me of the juicing guy. You remember the juicing guy? Oh, yeah, the eyebrows? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's dead, dead food, dead bodies. <laughs> Juice all your food. Uh, that guy was just on meth, I think. Next! All right. Uh, people think I'm stupid. Oh, here we go. Finally. The story of the man who shot himself 192 times. So let's re- 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 rewind back to two episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Scott Bedeau started a story. This is the story. For those of you who have been following along, episode 210, Scott Bedeau starts this story. Dave Bedeau, his brother, also the mayor of an entire fucking city, I'm a man. believed that this gentleman shot himself 192 <laughs> times in a row, which is not true. We are continuing the story here. The man is is the creator of the body armor. He has shot himself, mm-hmm. bringing it all back. Finally, after two episodes. Shot, he has shot not himself, but his flak jacket. Yes. 192 Yes. Times. All right. Go. As he's wearing it. As, he, as, as he's wearing it. Yes. Go. Uh, quote, a lot of people think I'm kind of stupid for doing this, admits Richard Davis, rolling up his sleeves, adding that if it changes one person's behavior, it will be worth it. He proceeds to turn the gun on himself, and after a tense pause, relieved only by birdsong, fires into his chest. Easy as pie, guys, he says cheerfully. The bullet had been stopped by body armor. Davis was the inventor of the modern-day bulletproof vest and shot himself point-blank 192 times to prove that it works. The ex-marine... Bankrupt pizzeria owner Uh-oh. and born showman <laughs> also mythologized his work by producing his own low budget movies. Oh, no. Popular with police across America. Oh, yeah, of course. At its zenith, Davis's company, Second Chance, was worth more than $50 million, with products being worn by police, soldiers, and even the president, George W. Bush. But while he saved thousands of lives, Davis put countless more at risk with reckless lies and a culture of impunity. He took an execution-style view of law enforcement to rival Dirty Harry. He also displayed a narcissism and a gift for self-aggrandizement. How do you say that word? Sure. We'll go with it. Yes. Worthy of Sir John Falstaff, P.T. Barnum, or Donald Trump. Oh, no. Gasp. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, gasp. Now his bizarre rags to riches to disgrace story is told in Second Chance, the debut feature documentary by an Iranian-American writer, director, and producer, Ramin Bahrani, Mm -hmm. who has previously dissected the American dream in films such as Chop Shop and 99 Homes. Yes. Heard of him? Ever seen him? Familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah? No. I don't believe you. No, not at all. Uh, the first quote, the first time I saw the footage of Richard pointing a gun to his chest and shooting point blank, your eyes pop out when you see that. Uh, and of course, he did it almost 200 times. In addition to that, he was also a filmmaker. He made lots of kinds of movies, propaganda, marketing, comedy. The marketing of it was very inventive and intriguing. He had a magazine called Sex and Violence. So he was very clear on what he thought would sell his product. Let's <laughs> be straightforward. Be yeah. straightforward and honest with the customer. I appreciate Sex it. Sex and violence. Yeah. We gotta get our hands on 
a copy of this you know magazine. What? I added to the, I, added yep, to the collection. Let's get it to the collection. Yep, <clears throat> Sex and Violence magazine. Um, I you think that you think that I may not? I'm going to. I actually. I do, do not think you may not. I, <laughs> I expect this. Okay, we'll get a copy of it. Sex and Violence magazine. <clears throat> uh, it worked. He went from an out of work pizzeria owner to running a multi million dollar company. There was something very brutal about these films. A pretty fascistic way of thinking about how to handle issues of justice or policing, and then at times broadly humorous or and totally crazy. All that archival footage was just a great way to highlight a lot of the themes and craziness of the story. So Second Chance is the name of this documentary. You might have to check it out. Yeah. Does it say where it's sitting? Uh, it does not. For some reason, I want to say Netflix, but I don't know if that's actually true. <clears throat> so... 192 times, right? He just continually just, keeps doing yep, it. Just to prove a point. Just to prove a point. Uh, you, how does he not, like, because you can still break ribs and stuff doing that. Yeah, it'll... Steroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just liver. No, he's only eating liver. <clears throat> yeah. Fresh foods, and veg- fruits and vegetables. Yeah, well, why 192 times? Why not one time Yes. record it Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> show that recording yes. 191 other times? I, I want to know what the comedy part of this is. Are, is he yeah. like, just putting yakety sacks behind, behind, <laughs> yeah. behind the same footage? Behind the sex violence? Yeah. Mm-mm. You know, it's fascinating to like, hear people talk about uh, law enforcement and like training and stuff because, you know, we went through that whole thing um, just recently, obviously, with, well, heck, we had the Gabe's quote in his book. You got the mm-hmm. Bob Kroll with uh, the Minneapolis Police Department, uh, un- the head of the union. Um, but this, there was this uh, wave of stuff, and I think it was called war- warrior training, I believe is what it was called, um, that was very militaristic, mm-hmm. you know, training. Is that, wait, is that the same guy that tells the cops that after they kill somebody, they'll have the best fuck of their life? That's the warrior training guy. I don't think okay. it's I don't think it's Bob Kroll. Okay. I hope it's not. <laughs> okay. If it is Bob Kroll, <laughs> take everything back about, <laughs> about everything. Um he had some some comments that people were not happy with. Let's mm. just say that. Uh but yeah, I think the warrior training that's exactly what you're talking about and we found out from our previous police chief that our police were going th- were using that training. Oh, of course. And he identified it and and removed it and said like this is not what we want. Is a city. Well, we, good. We, yeah. Good. Uh, we do not want our police <laughs> militarized because it's not, especially in a city like ours, you know, 14,000 people, balloons to 50,000 people in the summer. Uh, we, you, do, you don't want a military driving around looking for fights, right? Assuming mm-hmm. everybody's going to kill them. If right. They don't kill them first. Yes, uh-huh. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I have no belief in that whatsoever. So, um, but I'm intrigued by the comedy part of because <laughs> I could see where his other stuff is going. Mm-hmm. But I want to I want to know what are the jokes? Yeah, you gotta you gotta wonder what this guy's sense of humor is like. Yeah, uh, because Davis claimed that he was inspired to create body armor after a shootout with criminals against <laughs> a shootout with criminals against whom he was seeking revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Over the line! Oh, he had suffered bullet wounds to his head and leg, so. Something happened. Oh, well, he, hold he, he, on then. And then made body armor for his chest? Yeah. <laughs> Fail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that diagram of the World War II airplane. Yes. Yeah. The no, right like we, yeah. they built the we armor. have to fix this because they're coming back yeah. with these holes. With these it. holes. It's like, no, you don't. Those are the holes that they survived. <laughs> it's the other holes. <laughs> uh, I got shot in the head. Yeah, a helmet? No. <laughs> Better protect my gut. <laughs> uh, uh, his great insight was that Kevlar would allow lightweight vests to be worn okay. undetected under clothes. He left Detroit and opened a small factory in Central Lake, northern Michigan, hiring hundreds of people and becoming the town's biggest employer. Which he, he opened a small factory. Yep. Hiring hundreds of people. Yes. Becoming the town's biggest employer. Well, in <laughs> Michigan... Factory size. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, a yeah. little different scale. <laughs> he was seen as the savior of the struggling town and paid for its annual fireworks show. Oh, sign me up. $22,000. Yeah, tw- that's our budget for next year's fireworks here in town. $22,000. All right. What was yeah. it this year? 15? Uh, 16.5. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay. And I was not satisfied. So if you're listening and you were part of that fireworks display, I was disappointed. Yeah, so here's an extra $6,000. <laughs> yeah, do better. Her, get, yeah, get it right. <laughs> but when he hosted a shooting competition on his personal range mm. and a stray bullet ricocheted through the woods into an elderly woman's home... Oh, of course. Davis allegedly tried to bribe and then intimidate a teenager into taking the blame. Quote, listen, if you tell anyone, I will kill you. <laughs> if you tell anyone that you didn't kill her, <laughs> nobody kill died, you. just went, went into her home. Mm-hmm. Okay, well. One year, an explosion at the fireworks show killed one man and injured at least 15 oh, people. Was, yes. Again, he refused to take responsibility. Yeah. 15 oh, teenager. people. Wow. Yeah, 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 same yeah. teenager. Yeah, always the same kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the happy Gilmore golf caddy. Uh, <clears throat> beloved by police, Davis, oh, yes. the, of course, Davis faced few legal consequences. But then he distributed 100,000 vests containing a new material, Xylon, that proved defective. Oh, a police officer wearing it was shot and killed. Yeah, I don't want anything that sounds like nylon. It sounds like you just like <laughs> took nylon and then we're like, well, we'll just add a little extra. Yeah. Double yeah. nylon. Yeah. And, and turn himself? that N on its side. Yes. Z. <laughs> <laughs> did he shoot himself with the Xylon product? He, I, I don't think he did. Uh, Davis's longtime employee, Aaron Westrick, whose life had been saved by Second Chance Body Armor and who had acted in Davis's cult films, became a government whistleblower in a case against the company, wearing a wire and recording conversations about the faulty vests. Oh, nice. I like that even, even this, a longtime employee whose life had been saved by body armor. Yes. What are you guys doing? Yeah. You're just getting in gunfights all the time. <laughs> it's just shooting bullets wherever, going into old ladies' Took houses. Your fucking fireworks show <laughs> killed a guy and injured 15 other people. A policeman died because they wore your shit. Yeah. Like, but yet, what is going on? People think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, Comedy. <laughs> yeah, again, again, I'm going to stay with that. I'm still mm-hmm. wondering where what this guy's is. You know, I have a, I have an inkling as to what his sense of humor is, and I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, confronted about these confront, yeah. confronted about these incidents during interviews for the documentary, the septuagenarian Davis. Proves reluctant to fully own up to his mistakes. He describes the stray bullet incident as a, quote, inglorious misstep. An mm. inglorious misstep? An mis- inglorious misstep. Oh, out of here. There you go. Yeah. Maybe it, it's a linguistic <laughs> humor, <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> uh, he is an unreliable narrator, but also offers moments of stunning candor. Bahrani was taken by surprise. Oh. Quote, we tried to make it clear it was not a vanity film, which maybe is what he thought it would be, he says. But also, I tried to be very clear. I'm not trying to make a takedown movie. I'm generally interested in who you are and what you think and what you believe. And some of that he was prepared to reveal. Other things, I don't know if he was capable of going to emotional places. He seemed to talk a lot. Sometimes sometimes I was shocked by what he was saying on camera. Well, you referred to him as P.T. Barnum, and then you're shocked that he speaks? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somewhere between P.T. Barnum and Donald Trump. Yes. And he's talking? What? I was very surprised by this. That's crazy. Actually, fantastic. I, I, I'm I, very intrigued by this guy now. I, mm-hmm. I'm i going to look it up. What do you say? It was second chance? Second chance. Second, well, what is the second chance? Because you got he shot the in pizza. the... Ch- no, he, oh. lost, he lost the pizza place. <laughs> then he started the second business. <laughs> A second slice of life. Uh, hey. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. I, I'm going to look it up. Uh, and then we are going to get a copy of that uh, Sex and Violence magazine. Um, I, I'm going to get it just for the for the uh, uh, articles myself. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be good. Looks like it's being, it was released in cinemas in January. Okay. So, so it should be around. It should be somewhere, yeah. but I can't find I bet we I bet we can find it somewhere. Now We're, that it's been on the I Know Bado podcast, oh, somebody's going to sc- scoop it up for sure. They call that the Bado bump. The Bado bump. The Bado bump will get it. So, um, all right, Scotty, thank you for that. Yes. Uh, I appreciate it. And you're absolutely correct. We didn't have time for that last week. So <clears throat> that, that's fantastic. Uh, so this week we, we learned 
Um, <laughs> that, uh, stained glass uh, can be substituted with placenta, mm-hmm. which is very important. Um, that <laughs> that uh, I don't even remember what the second one was now because the third one was unbelievable. Just a, a completely reckless dude who people think is nuts. Yeah. And 192 times. Hundred so documented has to be clearly has to be documented how many times be. he's done. It. He yeah, must be filming it, If it's every 192 time. on the nuts, it's very specific. <clears throat> very specific. Not on the nuts though, on the chest. Sorry. Yes. On the teats. <laughs> again, protect the head, protect the nuts. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, well, thank you again, Scotty. Yes. And over to Gabe Johnson. Thanks, Dave. It's always a fun time. It always is a fun time. Uh, you versus I, fantasy football. Uh, you have made it to the semifinals. In final our, final in, four in the big league. Final four in the big league, the cash on the line. Yeah, I'm just going to say I, I'm just happy to be here. You came in as the lowest seed in the playoffs. I have the worst fantasy team in <laughs> this league that I've had in any league in my entire life. And you, here I am in the semis. And you took out the here number one seed and just in time to, to match up against me. And, uh, and I owe you one because you a do. few years ago... You came in as the lowest seed yes. and knocked me out <laughs> when I was the top seed. <laughs> that is exactly so. correct. So uh, we'll keep it going. We will keep it going. Uh, let's uh, shout out super fast to the Vikings. Uh, had the history making largest comeback in uh, NFL history. Uh, I would which, simply which you not only, give up thirty three points. Which you only in the first get. Time. Yes. You only yes. get by going down thirty three to zero yeah. at halftime. Yeah, yeah. I, would, so I, would, like, I would just simply not do it, that. It, start without that and then build from there. I, I'd like to know what the highest amount of points in one half is. I didn't look that up. We scored thirty nine. Uh, yeah, so I think the Patriots put up forty five. That's crazy. There was a game where they won like fifty. I think it was like 52 to nothing yeah. against the Titans. That's but 45 crazy. in the first half. Yeah, the first half, half and then coasted. Sad, oh, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. <clears throat> no, I, I don't know for sure if that's true. but It sounds like Patrick Peterson at halftime. Yes. Said, we'll get the stops. Yeah. Yep, you just need, you just you need, need five, five touchdowns. touchdowns. Five touchdowns. <laughs> five of them. Hey, I understand that you got zero. <laughs> and we didn't time. stop them. Yeah, and we didn't stop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to stop them all the time, and you're going to score all every time as well. And uh, we had two touchdowns called back for yeah. bullshit. Yes, did. Oh, my two God. Two of them. Yes. Uh, horrible officiating. Two of them this week, and last week, they called Jefferson out. Yes. Yes. Yep. When, out of bounds when he clearly wasn't. Yes. We had three touchdowns called back in two games. Yeah. Yeah, we're playing against the refs and the world, man. So <clears> it's true. Throat> now Jalen Hurts is down. It's, <clears throat> it's ours to lose. Anything is possible. We all know that. Kevin Garnett. Anything's possible! All right, enough of that. Uh, thank you to Gabe. Thank you to Scott. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we've got two guests coming on next week. We're going to try five people. We're going to see what happens, um, and, unless one of them cancels, which it's not Keith, so they probably won't cancel. Uh, but we're going to try it. We're going to try it out. We've got Will R. Denny, longtime yes. podcast favorite, uh, the uh, gentleman who just got us going so well with the Detroit stuffing story. He is finally back. Um, and bringing with him uh, Brad Simpson, who won one of our free uh, skate deck. Uh, I was going to call an award, but he won one of our free skate decks in our giveaway and then immediately said, I want to come on your podcast. And so we'll, uh, we'll allow it. Yeah, I we'll think. have him come on, talk about that, and kick him out. Yeah. And then we'll get yeah. How's oh, the cool skateboard? Skate. All right, good. I don't skateboard. All right, see you later. See ya. And with that, we're done.